The goal of relativity is to explain and understand how motion looks from different perspectives, and in particular, from different moving perspectives. It's easy enough to describe motion itself. If something is moving relative to me, that means it has different positions at different times, which I can plot on a space-time diagram. This straight line corresponds to motion at a constant velocity of, say, v units to the right every second. And the question we're interested in is, what do things look like from the moving perspective? Of course, the answer to this question is a physical one, and is determined by experimental evidence gathered by actually moving. And that evidence will come into play, but first we need to understand what it means, in terms of space-time diagrams, to view something from a moving perspective. We'll start with a key property of space-time diagrams. When someone draws a space-time diagram from their own perspective, on that diagram, they are always, for all time, located at position x equals zero, since any object is always a distance of zero away from where that object is. Or in other words, a space-time diagram like this represents your perspective only if your world line is a straight vertical line that passes through x equals zero. If on a space-time diagram the world line describing your motion leaves x equals zero and goes anywhere else, that means you're moving relative to the perspective of that particular diagram, and thus it's not your perspective. With this in mind, to describe how things look from the perspective of a moving object, like this cat, we simply need some way to transform space-time diagrams that makes the world line of the cat into a straight vertical line through x equals zero. Or in other words, we want to make the space-time diagram into one where the cat's world line coincides with the time axis. That's not something we can do just by sliding the whole plot left or right or up or down, like we've done in the past for perspectives from different locations. No, changes of velocity require some sort of rotation-y thing to change the angle of the world line, and importantly, whatever this rotation-y thing does should be generalizable to a world line at pretty much any angle, since there was nothing special about the particular speed the cat happened to be going. There are also two important pieces of experimental evidence that we'll need to take into account. First, if I measure the cat as moving at a speed v away from me, then the cat will measure me as moving at that same speed v away from it, and likewise if we're moving towards each other. Which means we not only want to transform the space-time diagram in a way that the cat's angled line becomes vertical, but we also want the angle between our lines to stay the same after the transformation. That is, from the cat's perspective, I should be moving. So that's the first piece of experimental evidence. The second one we'll come to later. Let's focus just on the section of the cat's world line from time t equals zero, where it's at x equals zero, to t equals four, where it's at x equals two. This section is a straight line between those two points, and we want it to end up as a straight vertical line, so we can simply leave the t equals zero, x equals zero point unchanged, while moving the t equals four, x equals two point over onto the time axis, where x equals zero. And there are really only three general possibilities for how to do this. Either this point gets moved onto the time axis while keeping it at the same point in time, t equals four, or it gets moved onto the time axis at an earlier time, say t equals three, or a later time, like t equals five. There's a very nice geometric way to picture these possibilities. If we think of motion on a space-time diagram as a series of snapshots, like at time t equals zero, the cat is at position zero, at time t equals one, the cat is at position point five, at time t equals two, the cat is at position one, etc., then the transformation where points move to the time axis and keep the same time just looks like sliding each snapshot over a corresponding amount. The possibility where points move to the time axis at a later time looks kind of like some sort of rotation around the origin, and the possibility where points move to the time axis at an earlier time looks kind of like some sort of squeeze-stretch rotation. The reason these last two involve rotating the snapshots rather than just sliding is to make sure that the angle between the cat's world line and my world line stays the same before and after the transformation. It's a fun little geometry puzzle to understand why. Now, among these three, the option that makes the most intuitive sense based on our everyday experiences of the passage of time is that a given point in time should stay at the same point in time and just slide over to the time axis. I mean, we don't noticeably experience time travel every time we hop on a train or bike or plane. And this sliding does mathematically work. If we move things at time t equals one a half meter to the left, and things at time t equals two one meter to the left, and so on, then we'll have a description from the cat's perspective. The cat's not moving, and I'm moving to the left half a meter every second. It works for other speeds, too. If we want the perspective of somebody who's going a meter per second to the right relative to the cat, we can slide the snapshots over even farther. And now the cat's going a meter per second to the left, and I'm going a meter and a half per second to the left. And of course, we can slide back to my perspective, from which the newcomer is going a meter and a half per second to the right. 
This kind of sliding change of perspective is normally called a shear transformation, but that's when both dimensions are space dimensions. Since one of our dimensions is time, a shear transformation represents a change in the velocities of things, so in physics it's called a boost as in rocket boosters boosting you to a higher speed. However, it turns out that boosts in the physical universe are not actually described by shear transformations. This is where the second and most famous piece of experimental evidence comes in, the speed of light. As you've probably heard, starting in the late 1800s, physicists built up mountains of experimental and theoretical evidence that the speed of light in a vacuum is always the same, even if you measure it from a moving perspective. This is, of course, entirely unintuitive from our everyday experiences with velocities, where if you throw a ball from a standstill and then from a moving vehicle, the ball thrown from the vehicle will be moving faster relative to the ground. And yet, experimental results show that light does not behave like everyday objects. Shine light from a standstill or from a moving vehicle, and its measured speed relative to the ground will be the same. Shear transformations simply can't accommodate this feature of light's behavior. They change all velocities equally by sliding each snapshot an amount proportional to its time. No velocity remains unchanged. If you draw the world line of a light ray and then change to a moving perspective using a shear transformation, the speed of that light ray will change, which is wrong. Luckily, one of the other two options for boosting to a moving perspective can accommodate a constant speed of light. Remember the transformation where the snapshots do a kind of squeeze rotation and points move to the time axis at earlier times? This kind of transformation can amazingly leave one speed unchanged even while it changes all other speeds. Even more amazingly, the unchanged speed is left unchanged in all directions. Let's do an example. Here's a set of snapshots from my perspective with a slow-moving sheep and two fast-moving cats. And let's suppose that we have experimental evidence that cats always move at the same speed regardless of perspective. If we want to describe this situation from the perspective of the sheep, we can't simply slide the snapshots over so the sheep isn't moving and its world line coincides with the time axis, since that would change the speed of the cats. But if we slide and rotate and stretch the snapshots like this, then look, we've transformed the diagram to both describe things from the sheep's perspective and keep the cats moving at the same speed they were before. You might note that the various cats appear to be spaced out differently along their world lines, but that just means that the constant time snapshots from my perspective aren't constant time snapshots from the sheep's perspective. The important thing is that the angle of the cat's world lines, which represents their speed, has remained unchanged. It's kind of amazing to me that this works at all, that it's mathematically and physically possible for all speeds except one to change. But it is possible with these squeeze rotation-y things, and they're the answer to our question of how to describe motion from a moving perspective. Well, not by keeping the speed of cats constant, but by keeping the speed of light constant. By doing squeeze rotations so that a moving perspective's angled world line becomes vertical without changing the speed of light. That is, without changing the slope of the world lines for light rays. These squeeze rotation-y things are called Lorentz transformations, named after one of the first people to derive the correct mathematical expression for them, which looks kind of like the equations for rotations that we saw in the last video, and I'll post a follow-up video showing how to derive this using just a few simple assumptions and experimental facts. Lorentz transformations are at the heart of special relativity. They're the thing that Lorentz and Einstein and Minkowski and others figured out was the correct description of how motion looks from moving perspectives in our universe, and they'll be the foundation of the rest of this series. Normally, physicists draw their space-time diagrams such that if every vertical tick mark represents one second, a horizontal tick mark represents 299,792,458 meters, which means that the speed of light, which is 299,792,458 meters per second, is drawn as a 45 degree line, to the right for right moving light, and to the left for left moving light. With this scaling, a Lorentz transformation that leaves the speed of light constant simply consists of squeezing everything along one 45 degree line and stretching along the other, in a particular proportional way. You can see immediately how this changes the angles of all the other world lines, that is, changes what speed we perceive them to be going, and yet doesn't change any of the light rays. And it turns out that it's possible to actually build a mechanical device that does Lorentz transformations for you. Just like how a globe has the structure of rotations built into it in a fundamental way, and you can simply turn the globe to see how rotations work, rather than doing a lot of complicated math, this space-time globe has Lorentz transformations built in. It does the math of special relativity for you, allowing you to focus on understanding the physics, the physics of motion from different perspectives. Here's a quick example. From my perspective, I'm always at the same position as time passes, while the cat is moving away from me to the right at a third the speed of light, and the light rays from my light bulb are moving out to the right and left at the speed of light. 
Using the time globe, I can do a Lorentz transformation to boost into the cat's perspective. And from the cat's perspective, the cat, naturally, stays at the same position, x equals zero, as time passes, while the cat views me as moving away from it at a third the speed of light to the left, and the speeds of the light rays from my light bulb are still the same, still at 45 degree angles. I just love how tangible and hands-on this is. Normally, when people are first introduced to special relativity, and how motion looks from different perspectives, it's done with a bunch of messy, incomplete, algebraic equations. But you don't need the equations to understand the ideas of special relativity, and how motion looks from different perspectives. You just need an understanding of space-time diagrams, and a time globe. And so in the rest of this series, I'm going to be using the time globe extensively to dive into all of the normally confusing things you've heard about in special relativity. Time dilation, length contraction, the twins paradox, relativity of simultaneity, why you can't break the speed of light, and so on. I have to say a huge thank you to my friend Mark Rober for helping actually make the time globe a reality. You may be familiar with his YouTube channel where he does incredible feats of engineering, like this dartboard that moves so you always hit the bullseye. He devoted a huge amount of time, effort, and engineering expertise to turn my crazy idea of a mechanical Lorentz transformation into this beautiful, precision, hands-on representation of special relativity, and I'm supremely indebted to him. This series, as I envisioned it, wouldn't be possible otherwise. And if you're eager for more details about how this thing works, I'm planning another whole video about the time globe itself. In the meanwhile, to get more hands-on with the math of special relativity, or economics, or machine learning, I highly recommend Brilliant.org, this video's sponsor. In conjunction with my video series, Brilliant has rolled out their own course on special relativity with their own unique illustrative scenarios, like relativistic laser tag to understand Lorentz transformations. And if you want to understand a mathematical topic deeply, there's really nothing better than thinking through the ideas and solving problems yourself. And Brilliant helps you do just that. Once you're ready to go in-depth into special relativity, or perhaps linear algebra or group theory, which are both also relevant for relativity, you can get 20% off by going to brilliant.org slash minutephysics. Again, that's brilliant.org slash minutephysics, which gets you 20% off premium access to all of Brilliant's courses and puzzles, and lets Brilliant know you came from here.